All right, it is 7.50 on October 21st, and we are on our way to Coyote Gulch with this awesome sunrise behind us here. We're gonna be stopping at Escalante and picking up our permit. Those are the Henry Mountains, just south of us here. Pretty awesome sunrise. We are in the Escalante Visitor Center. Going down hole in the rock road. Down to there. We are at the Escalante Outfitters. And they have a lot of supplies for things you need before your trip. A real cozy place in here. They got all your outdoor supplies you need. They even have a coffee shop down here. A kitchen and everything. It's really cool. It's a nice cozy place on a gloomy rainy day. We're about to start our adventure. And it smells really good in here. We've got pastries. Mocha is everything. We are here at the crack in the wall trailhead, about to drop into the east end of Coyote Gulch into the Escalante River area. So what's your name and how do you feel about, about this trip? Are you excited? My name is Jacob, Jacob Armstrong. If you wanted to know that, I'm sure you don't, but I, I, I'm Jacob. We are dropping in only probably about two miles to where we're gonna camp, hopefully. And we do have some more clouds coming in. Looks like these ones might get us a little bit. So we're gonna, we're gonna head out right now just in case, but it is, 1.30 on Sunday, October 21st, 2018. And we're dropping into Coyote Gulch. Save his say. last words. All right, here we go. Started going. So we are starting a three day, two night trip here, Coyote Gulch. It's gonna be from estimates about 14 miles camping at the confluence of Escalante and Coyote Gulch today. Taking a look at our descent down. Straight in the middle there, there's a tiny white dot and that's Mountaineer up on that ridge. And we're just looking back the way we came. Give my good side. They definitely got some rain around here. Got some tadpoles. This one's pretty deep. Probably a couple feet down there. He knows we dropped some crumbs. Why are you dropping crumbs, Jake? We are just about ready to drop in, and that is Stevens Arch. We have made it to where we're gonna drop down, Coyote Gulch and Escalante behind me. That is the crack that we have to drop the packs through, and then drop them further down here, and there's the trail leading down. Do you ever just feel like Every time you go on a trip, you're like, wow, that's gonna be like, you know, I'm never gonna see takes my breath away like that again. All right, we're dropping in. We got some uh, cord. Here we go. Going down. All right, can you hand me down mine first? Like that. Wait, how'd that go? 
Epic. Okay, I can get the bed roll. Yeah. So we're going to drop, lower our packs with cord right here. Then you climb up, actually right past this rock, and end up down there by that trail post sign. So we're tying up the packs, and we'll lower them down. Just drop down there. This is really tight in here. Whew. That is a very tight squeeze getting through there. Puff my chest out. Where do you think would be the best spot here? Okay. Jake up here, lowering my behemoth pack. Thing weighs 127 pounds. Get close to me here, keep going. You're a little bit snagged. Got it. All right. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I haven't been embraced like that in ages. You ready to just send it, bro? It's really nice. Yeah, this is great weather. We are making our way down from the crack in the rock. And this just continues to impress. Are you excited? I'm excited. Can you please describe one more time what is on your sandwich in your pack right now? Uh, blackened turkey on that. And then you have spinach and uh, chipotle gouda and then avocado, smashed avocado on it and uh, this uh, tomato eggplant tapenade that I got that's really good. And it's all grilled, it's like a panini also. This is the food he's bringing on this trip. Andy's got flair, look at this guy. Look at his backpack, look at that. Steven's Arch coming back into view. We're gonna head down into the gulch, and then head back out right to the confluence. We are dropping down into the south section of Coyote Gulch. Pretty steep. <laughs> that is pretty tricky. We have made it down into Coyote Gulch. That's looking the way we're going to be going tomorrow. And we are heading down this way. Jake is chocoing up. Jake's first water crossing. It's not as deep as you think either. We are officially walking through Coyote Gulch. What's the problem there? I got a million tiny rocks. Go spawn our camp spot. It's gonna be a good one. I wanna show you guys how it feels great to walk into a camp spot sometimes. You ready for this? Wow. I think we found our spot for the night. Right at the confluence of the Escalante and Coyote Gulch. And we got Stevens Arch right up there. Right at the confluence of the Escalante and Coyote Gulch with Stevens Arch right behind us. Set up camp. Get it going. Gonna feel nice sleeping on some nice sand. One of these the bread's all fucked up on. <laughs> that sandwich you were talking about. Mm. Oh man. Oh my gosh, that's good.
give you a look around camp here. Our tent here. So this is looking up east here. Gonna have the sun rise in this direction and right now the sun is setting over our shoulder here. Looking back up towards where we dropped in today. I'm going to show you on the map what we did today. Uh, we came down the Hole in the Rock Road, coming down this direction from Escalante. It was about 37 miles to the 40 mile ridge road right here, which became a, a rough four wheel drive road, real sandy, a lot of fun to drive. So we drove to the water tank here where we left the bike. So the bike is waiting there for when we come back and then we drove to the 40 mile ridge trailhead right here. Um, that's where we parked. We hiked across kind of the, the top area, really exposed and the uh, storms were coming in. So we were trying to rush to a crack in the wall there and we dropped down through there, handed packs down and lowered packs with the cord into Coyote Gulch right about there. <laughs> uh, we were right at the tail end of Coyote Gulch and then went east to the confluence right here of the Escalante River and we're camped right where this dot is, where my good buddy Jamie uh, told us to camp, and it's got a great straight shot view right here of Stevens Arch. So tomorrow we're heading up Coyote Gulch. Um, not really sure exactly where we're going to camp, but Jacob Hamblin Arch is right here, and that's where we're coming, hiking out on the last day back to right here. So somewhere in between here, but you can see my writing. I wrote some notes. There's a waterfall, uh, Black Lagoon, it's a big pool some uh, pictographs and artifacts, some Indian ruins, and then the natural bridge and the arch. Trail whiskey. This time I went with bullet bourbon. I had the bullet rye last time and just going with the traditional. Six o'clock, just made it. Happy hours two to six. Wow, that was good timing. <laughs> Tastes like whiskey. Yes, it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got those trail beers too. Oscar Blues Goodnight, Imperial Red IPA, delicious. And a Rogue Honey Kolsch. Really good for a Kolsch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They made it. They didn't break. No, no spills, no. All right, we got Dottie's chicken and dumplings. Put it in the packet gourmet koozie. All right, it's getting real dark. It is only seven o'clock, but we are down in this uh, canyon, so it's, uh, we're losing light quick. So this might be the last video, most likely will be. It was a great hike in, um, had an awesome time. This camp spot's really cool. How, how are you liking it here? It's pretty cozy. I feel like I'm being hugged by the rocks. Also got some good food. We're gonna call it the end of night, <laughs> night number one here in Coyote Gulch. And we will uh, see you guys in the morning. So I got a new coffee system this time. Uh, previously I've had the coffee press and I've done instant coffee a lot on trips. But I picked up this. Little guy from GSI Outdoors, you just clip it onto your cup, put the coffee in, and pour over. I'm not a reasonable person. I mean, you might as well just do half, right? <laughs> just dump the whole pack. I mean, yeah, I guess. For tomorrow morning, I guess. Yes. It's very satisfying. Ooh, that smell, dude. Yeah. It's morning of our second day, and we have yet to get the sun down in the canyon here. Real good night. Slept really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, slept all through the night, but that'll happen when you woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, drove for six hours, and then hike.
It is 8.45 and the sun is about to show its face to us here on a nice cool Monday morning here in late October. So uh, you got some water out of the uh, ye old Escalante River, huh? Old Escalante River filtered with my uh, handy dandy Sawyer water squeeze filter. First time I used it, I was really disappointed. It takes a second for the filter to kind of let water run through it. But now that I've used it a few times, it just comes right out. It's got fresh clean water. This is looking south, southeast, towards where the Escalante continues, down towards Lake Powell. And we are going to be heading up and to the left here through Coyote Gulch. To the right there is the Escalante, continuing north. Stevens Arch. Hard to tell its size from here, but it's enormous. Nothing quite like an apple on the trail. Juicy, delicious, full of water, hydrating. And once you eat it, that weight's gone. Today, we're gonna walk up the river again, another 100 yards or so, head into Coyote Gulch right up there. Saw a lot of colors coming in, yellow trees, cottonwoods, and I hope that'll uh, continue up through our trek today. All right, we're heading out. Got some clouds behind us, they're moving that way, but it's supposed to be some scattered storms today. Once we get into Coyote Gulch, we'll have a little bit of cover with overhangs. So this is what we're hiking in. We're, we were just hiking through the river. We're gonna go back in in a minute, but it's pretty chilly. I don't think it's that bad. No. Yeah, I think it feels colder because our legs, when we came through it the last time, we're like, hot after hiking all day, but I don't think, I, it's, it, I think it's all right. I guess I'm just a wuss. Yeah. Not sure what the usual amount of water is running through here, but it seems pretty he healthy right now. You go to Escalante and you're not easy from the river, you can really go to Escalante. I don't, yeah, I don't think it'll be as bad going back up. I think it's just sketchy coming down because all that sand. Touch. Well, it looks like we might have knocked off a lot of that sand up here. Woo! So, when you're out here and you're in the desert and temperatures are in the 50s, 40s, um, you're walking through this water too, really cold water. Obviously, you don't want to do it with boots um, on, get your boots wet. So, we both have chacos are nice but you get sand and little pebbles underneath the straps and against your foot and it's really irritating. One other thing I'm considering in the future if I'm going to keep doing these Utah trips which are most likely going to be happening are getting lightweight um, trail runner shoes. You can walk through water with them and then they dry pretty quickly when you're out and you can even wear some lightweight breathable socks with them. Yeah there's a little bit of rain coming. I can feel it. All right. So last time we filmed, it was getting rainy. Put on the uh, rain gear, uh, pack covers, and I put the camera away. We uh, lost a water bottle, and we went back a ways to see if we could find it, and we couldn't. So um, the last option is that it could be up here where we were, and we dropped our packs. We have other options for Jake to uh, store water and everything anyways. Like two liters in here, so I won't die. We'll be good. And it stopped raining for now. But that looks pretty ominous down there. We'll see. We are here at a spring. I'm gonna get some nice fresh water. Another 
Silver Spring. We are hearing some thunder. Um, it rained earlier, like I said, put the camera away. We just have this idea of flash flood in our mind. Got some lightning and thunder going on right now, but take a look at this overhang. I mean, I'm, I'm 20 feet deep in this overhang. It's, it's enormous. So it is raining pretty good, loud thunder. We got Merlot Bellavitano cheese, cracker, summer sausage, and some mango. And you get all of them on one bite. Gangster. <laughs> gangster. Super gangster. I mean, you know, snap a little bit off there. Like that. Oh man, it's so good with the, with the mango. Mango. You ever see that skit on SNL with Chris Kattan? Who were little shorts. Like, mango. Cracker. Meat. Mango. Cheese. What? You got that protein in there. That fat from the cheese, nice sugars from the from the mango, and that carb from that cracker. Mmm. Brain loves it. Tummy loves it. Body loves it. in the afternoon on our second day here in Coyote Gulch and we are from my guess to where we're trying to camp we're either about halfway to where we're trying to get today maybe under that maybe a third but we got to make a little bit of a mileage here so it's getting a little lighter and we've heard less thunder We just got a lot of rain in here, and these canyon walls have come to life. So that is Cliff Arch. It's got water running down it. And some of these walls of the canyon have just been overflowing from the rain right now. We just got a lot of rain again. Just brought the camera back out and Coyote Gulch's water has turned muddy and brown. It's been a really wet day so far. Finally clearing up now. Got our first blue skies pretty much all day. I'm not sure what the normal volume of water that Coyote Gulch gets, but this looks pretty intense. There's some pretty big logs that are floating through this creek right here. Hit you in the shin, it wouldn't feel very good. This looks pretty cool. Take you through here. Get in her. This thing has some force to it. Man. You took your bear grill fancy way too far. <laughs> this is our fourth or fifth time crossing Coyote Gulch here. Focus. Master Zen like focus. How's that? Refreshing. Just crossed Coyote Gulch again. That is water feeding in from a waterfall straight ahead down that canyon back there. Could be the Black Lagoon too, that is a feature that we're gonna see, but man, this river. We have found what we're gonna call home for our second night here. Pretty awesome view, but we're gonna get out of these rain clothes and set up camp a little bit. The, uh, the creek here in Coyote Gulch, as you can see from previous videos, is pretty crazy. 
Uh, we think it's just from the rain today. So tomorrow morning, I'm guessing that the river should be a lot lower and we should have no problem crossing. <laughs> It can be whatever you want it to be in. Losing light pretty quick here, but it's quarter to seven. Got our camp set up here. Tent, laundry area. Jacob. Need more skinnies. All right, it is now very dark. It's about eight o'clock. Well, what means? Putanesca. Yeah? What's it mean? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe nobody does. It's in this pot, that's though. That's what it looks like. Putanesca. We are eating dinner here, and it is getting very dark. Got the moon wanting to come up over there. So it is morning of the third day. We uh, got really dark last night, so I didn't even have a send-off goodnight video. Completely overcast, no rain right now or no really threatening looking clouds, just overall cloudy. Um, it's a little chilly and really wet and humid and damp this morning everything. How was the night, man? It was pretty good. It was kind of spooky, honestly. We were on this little spot that, I mean, doesn't look like it would get flooded unless, you know, a really hard rainstorm came in, but you never know out in the desert. So I, I definitely woke up one time out of the middle of the night, like, because it was raining and I was super scared. And before I even realized it, I was kind of already out of my sleeping bag and like had my tent door open, just like looking out to see if there was any kind of water coming. And then a couple times, uh, some trees fell. They sounded like they were in the gulch, maybe where they were getting flooded yesterday and got too weak and just fell under their own weight. Overall, you know, this is an experience for sure. It's a good day yesterday. Today should be a little bit easier. <coughs> that the water over there is like incredibly lower now than it was yesterday when we were passing through it so should be a good one got some oatmeal some coffee it's not a bad way to start this morning out so we are enjoying this morning here say about two-thirds up Coyote Gulch for where we need to get out today got a double batch of maple oatmeal right here thicker than tar so it is Wednesday we will be heading out today back up to the to where the bike is parked and then I need to take the bike down ride it down two miles back to the car pick up the car and then come back and get the packs and that was the original plan to save some time um, as long as it's not raining up high we shouldn't have a problem I don't think it's always sad when we're packing up camp bittersweet the call of Food and a nice warm bed is always nice too. We deprive ourselves of the uh, tastes, flavors, and things we love, and it makes them that much more worthwhile once you get out of here and go and enjoy them. Yeah. I brought the Monkey Wrench Gang with me. Excellent book by Edward Abbey. I read uh, Desert Solitaire a couple months back. What's the song make you want to do? We had quite the adventure coming into camp last night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Day. That was wild. We actually, I think, crossed right on this little ledge right there coming into camp. We dropped in and forded up the river a little bit. It was, it was up there. Probably, I'd say probably this line is where it was at yesterday. I mean, it was easily, we're, we're guessing down here to these reeds. The real question is right here is a shelf right past that plant. We're debating if it was truly to that shelf all the way across this whole thing. We know it at least got to where these reeds are pushed down. I mean, this thing was 15 feet wide. So when we compare that pour off to where it was yesterday, I, I think it was, the line was, you know, up, yeah. up there. That was coming out fast. Yeah, it was. It was pouring out. All in all, this thing is <laughs> significantly less.
This whole channel was flowing last night. It's the 23rd today, Tuesday, uh, October 23rd, 2018. Had a quite the day yesterday, definitely a new experience. It's challenging but rewarding. And now we are uh, headed out. This is the last day. We will be home and in a nice cozy bed before we know it with some experiences that we'll never forget. Is that good? Yeah. All right. All right. Day three. Giant cliff walls. Heading out of camp. Again, this river last night was going to that bank right there where those reeds are. Go for it, man. This ground is weird. Weird beard. <laughs> Showing off that core strength over there. One leg in it with the pack on. I mean, it's super light today, but I'm still, I'm impressed. And you know, as long as you impress yourself, that's the key. We are approaching the natural bridge here. The river cuts right through it. The water last night was easily to this ridge here. I mean, you can, you can see where that... Yeah, we heard it breaking it, trees in the night. Yeah. And that wasn't even, it was way lower than, than when we went to sleep. There's the natural bridge. Just walked under it. The water carved a hole through this thing. Not through you. The water no, not carved me. this. Not you. You've been carved through time. That. I don't think I mentioned on the video yet when we were going to sleep last night, um, the water was rushing really heavy and we started hearing cracks. Um, at first I thought it was someone smacking together sandals or shoes. It was a tree cracking. So there were a couple cracks. Then a couple more, and about five minutes later, just sound like firecrackers. Crazy. You'd hear it crash on the ground, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. right after that, 10 minutes later, there was another tree uh, on the other side of the river, maybe even in the creek, crash down again, and we were getting kind of worried where we were camped. I don't know if you could come here a dozen times and ever see conditions like this. So, pretty unique. Rainy, um, but not a bad experience. Really unique and awesome. That's just the unpredictableness of backpacking and weather conditions. But it led for an awesome time. Going through those rivers yesterday was crazy. A lot of fun. It's all right. Little darling. It's been a long, lonely winter. Little darling, it seems like you think it. That album. All right, I'm gonna go first. Going first across this. It's almost almost waist deep. Jake thinks he can go over the top, but I say adventure. Could be some sinky mud. Just go that way. It gets deep for a second. You'll feel a step up. It's gonna drop down again after that too. It gets a little deep. See, that's about where it's gonna go and I'll keep coming. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the deepest. And then there's, there's a big step up right here. Yeah, get up that and then you're pretty good. Stay against the wall that sinks. And don't step over here, this is goop. <laughs> You a little wet? A little bit, yeah. <laughs>
overhang again is similar to the one that we were in yesterday during the rainstorm. This one is higher up even, and sure enough, there's a big camp spot down there. With all the rain, places like this would be really awesome. So you're not allowed to, not allowed to have fires here. That sure looks like a fireplace to me. Um, it's pretty smart that it's behind the rocks though. And this kitchen setup is complete with table and chairs. This kitchen set can be yours for a low price of $4.99. Free 99. Free 99. Yeah. You wouldn't do it. The more I drink IPAs, the more I start to like them. Yeah. Do you think up here or over there? hard to gather the perspective of these walls here. This place is just a oasis in the desert. Water flowing, springs galore, things like this. This is great to come across. Nice open views to the canyon. <laughs> Jake spent five minutes looking for his socks and they're in his boot. Yep. Check every last pocket in my bag. Every single one. So we have reached where we are going to be heading up. Jacob Hamblin Arch is right around the corner. And we're going to climb up this slick rock with the packs. Getting out of Coyote Gulch. We are almost to the top of what they call the sneaker route to get up out of Coyote Gulch. We climbed up this rock, full packs. We came up all the way down from there. Very steep. And now, we're heading up that. I'm gonna give you an idea of what huh? climbing out of here looks like. We made it though, Mike. Yes, we did. It's like we're walking on Mars, man. This place is really crazy looking. Water from the storms. Just climbing up these rock folds. That's an example of how Jacob Hamlin Arch formed. Right underneath there. Threatening clouds, the way we're going. You gotta get back to this trailhead and I gotta get on the bike. I'm gonna drop packs and I'm gonna ride the bike back to the car. I'm Batman. Not really. <coughs> Batman would have a much easier time in that canyon. He was in much better shape than me. We are up top. This is looking north. Looking out. North, oh. northeast, light way out there. Fly like a seabird. That's 50 Mile Ridge, this whole ridge. We're driving back up to the right towards Escalante on the way out. And there is the water tank trailhead. Coyote Gulch did not disappoint. First day we hiked in, camped down at the Escalante there on that sand and had an awesome sunset and sunrise. Day two, started raining when we went up the canyon, hunkered down under that overhang for a little over an hour while it poured. That Coyote Gulch water just was something else. But that was an experience never to be forgotten, going across that river and just being ready for anything takes a lot out of you walking through washes and conditions like that, climbing around rocks and full packs, but it sure led for an unforgettable time. We are back to where the bike was. I rode the bike two miles down, came back and we are here and we have some beers. Yep. Ah. Mm. Awesome trip. Oh, we got a Eddie Line pumpkin patch ale for him. I got Modus Mandarina, Mandarin Orange IPA from Ska. 
Eddie Linus from Buena Vista, Colorado. This uh, trip was awesome. Um, how do you how do you sum it up, man? What do you? It was great. It was an experience. It was a uh, definitely a <coughs> challenge on that second day, but something a lot of people can't say that they did. Make make for a great story. We're gonna go back to Escalante. I think it's about an hour forty five back there. Uh, we're gonna grab some pizza. It's about a seven hour drive home. Cheers to Escalante Canyon Country. Can't wait to get back here again. That is 50 mile ridge. Got some storms coming, but we made it back to the car in time. The road out. We have made it back to Escalante Outfitters. And we got pizza going on. Yeah. Delicious pizza. Supplies, cabins, food, all the good stuff. I got pizza too. How's that pizza? It's pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good. <laughs> got a round of beers, some pie. <laughs> Escalante Outfitters.